Depending on where you look, you're getting a lot of mixed signals about the housing market in 2022. Everything from Goldman Sachs saying home prices will rocket another 16% to the National Association of Realtors saying the housing market is likely to normalize with 5.7% home appreciation by the end of the year. And of course, there are always the broken records of how real estate market will come crashing down just like Chicken Little foretold the sky is falling. You're all in danger! Look, I know you're busy and I appreciate you clicking on this video. So let's just dive right into the top seven housing market predictions for 2022. Afterward, if you wanna know how I got there, grab a snack, get comfortable and keep watching. By the way, my name is Andrew Finney and I help people take the guesswork out of real estate with educational videos like this one. Please keep in mind, I don't have a crystal ball for the future. The predictions I'm sharing with you are backed up with facts I'll go into later in this video. If you don't have the time to watch it all right now, that's okay. Bookmark it and come back to it later. For now, let's get to the housing market predictions before life gets in the way. Prediction number one, mortgage interest rates will increase to 3.75% to 4.25% by the end of 2022. Prediction number two, Housing affordability will get worse. Why? Already high home prices exceed what the average home buyer can afford. As a result, housing affordability is at the lowest point since 2008. Home affordability will only get worse as mortgage interest rates go up. More on this later. Prediction number three, housing supply. Expect a gradual increase in the supply of homes by the end of 2022. The uptick in housing supply will likely become more noticeable in the third and fourth quarters. Prediction number four, home price forecast. I'm giving this one a range of probably 3% depreciation to 3% appreciation. I'll discuss why the market could go up slightly or down later. Prediction number five, rental prices. According to the National Association of Realtors, or NAR for short, monthly rental prices will continue to rise possibly as much as 7.1% by the end of the year. Prediction number six, market conditions. The insane bidding wars in 2021 will slow down and phase out on average as the year progresses in most real estate markets. Prediction number seven, migration patterns. People will continue seeking out more affordable housing markets across the United States. The great migration continues to the Midwest, South, and rural areas of the United States. Plus, it's taking a twist too. You'll want to see why later. Now, let's be honest. Unforeseen factors are always a consideration when making a prediction video. So here are three things to watch out for as the year progresses. Number one, any new economic policy changes that might affect mortgages and housing. Number two, if any other COVID mutations like Omicron come out, let's hope not. So please be responsible and please stay safe. Number three, acts of God, like mother nature or global strife. Now, if you gotta go, it's okay. But before you do, please smash thumbs up and hit subscribe, thank you. Okay, if you have a few moments, allow me to share with you how these predictions impact you. If you're buying a home this year, you need to be prepared. Here are three action steps to help you. Number one, get your financial ducks in a row and ready to go. To better help out, there's a freebie download of mortgage tips you can use in the video description below this video. Number two, gain clarity on what home means to you. Think through what compromises you're willing to make and which ones are non-negotiable. Number three, hire the right agent to help navigate the fast-moving real estate market. If you're selling a house, this year could be the top of the roller coaster ride before it starts going the other way. So enjoy the view from the top while you still can. This view comes into focus with generous offers, fewer buyer concessions, and selling quickly in most cases for the best price possible. Whether you're buying a home or selling a house or doing both, it will take having the right agent on your team. Fortunately, finding the right agent for you is pretty easy to do with the right help. My friends at Home & Money have an enthusiastic concierge team dedicated to your success. They will help match you with the right realtor based on what's important to you. Check them out. Why not? It's free to use and the link is in the description below. Either way, the choice is yours. Please make it a well-informed choice that is right for you for the reasons important to you. Now, if you're ready to unpack the predictions and see how I got there, 
Go grab that snack, get comfortable, here we go. Prediction number one, mortgage interest rates. What do you think will happen if mortgage interest rates go up to 3.75% to 4.25% this year? According to a recent Redfin survey, they found nearly half of all home buyers would feel more urgency to buy a home if rates pass 3.5%. A Forbes article cited the mortgage rates forecast of three leading chief economists to back this up. Their mortgage rate forecast ranged from 3.4% to 4% by the end of 2022. Now, if you're planning on buying a home this year, how will higher mortgage interest rates impact your home buying plans? Drop us a line below to let us know. Okay, so when many of us hear rates are going up, it can give us that fear of missing out feeling that we will lose a great deal if we don't Act now. Let's face it, when we're buying something big like a car or a home, every increase in the rate, we feel the pinch in our purchasing power. We know that when interest rates increase, we'll suffer the pain in our monthly budget as we pay more than if we took the lower rate for the same thing. It's almost like we start smashing some kind of panic buying button. That's not good, but what is good is smashing thumbs up on this video and subscribing. Thank you. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Before you smash that panic buying button like someone at a Las Vegas casino hitting max bet, hoping they hit the jackpot, I'm asking you to take a deep breath, take a step back, and reassess your situation to clarify what's most important to you for the reasons important to you. A calm mind will always make well-informed decisions, while a chaotic mind will usually make poor, impulsive decisions. All right, let's talk about what this means to you. But first, let's shed light on what you're hearing and seeing about mortgage rates right now. To do so, we first need to take a quick look back where mortgage rates were pre-COVID and the monetary policies enacted that bring us to the present day. Before COVID, mortgage interest rates were hovering around 3.74% in December 2019 for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, as we can see on the Freddie Mac Primary Mortgage Market Survey. In that same year, in 2019, the year started with mortgage rates around 4.45%, a level that seems crazy today. It might come as a surprise, but the Fed said they planned on raising rates once or twice in 2019. So why did the rates drop? In short, because the United States economy was stalling. So the Fed stepped in to curb the impact of a weakening US economy using what's called an expansionary monetary policy. For a quick lesson about what that means, let's turn to our friends at Investopedia. Investopedia tells us that an expansionary policy is intended to prevent or moderate economic downturns and recessions. So what did we feel in our everyday life when that happened? We saw lower interest rates from auto loans, credit card rates, student loans, and lower mortgage rates that made us start thinking now might be the right time to make a big money move. So people previously on the fence about making a big purchase jumped off the proverbial fence with both feet while the rates were low to buy a new car, get new credit, or buy their new home to live their best life. Moving into 2020, the Wall Street Journal posted an article, the US economy heads into 2020 with steady growth. But looking past the catchy headline midway in the article, it also mentioned the yields on 10-year treasury notes also fell below yields on three-month treasury bills. The reason that is important to know is the 10-year US treasury note is a critical consideration in predicting interest rate spikes and declines. As 2020 was just getting started, we all brace for impact as the World Health Organization declares the coronavirus outbreak is a global pandemic. To help mitigate the economic fallout from Americans being furloughed from work and losing their jobs, According to this Brookings article, the resulting economic uncertainty caused the Fed to cut the rate to near zero in March 2020. The Fed said the near zero rates will be in place until it is confident the economy has weathered recent events and is on track to achieve its maximum employment and price stability goals. As 2021 dawned, the Wall Street Journal posted the survey results of 68 economists that believe the US economic growth will exceed 4% in 2021. Okay, so you might be thinking, thanks Andrew for the trip down memory lane, 
But what does this have to do with the mortgage rates in 2022? And how will the rates this year affect me? It's a good point, my friend. Keep in mind, everything in life has a balance. Like yin and yang, what goes up must come down and what goes down will eventually go back up. So is true with the monetary policies in the United States. When one policy goes too far, the opposite policy will come into play to rebalance economic cycles. And how long the Fed keeps the rate low is one major factor that can cause a higher inflation rate. To back this up, Fannie Mae posted this piece that the economy finishes 2021 strong, inflation is a top risk concern for 2022. Like a rudder turning on a large ship, it takes a long time to notice the effect. You see, the economic and monetary policies are like rudders on the ship known as the US economy. We're beginning to feel the impact of the prolonged use of an expansionary monetary policy. The Fed is likely to implement a contractionary monetary policy to cool down the overheated prices. Our friends at Investopedia tell us the goal of a contractionary monetary policy is to reduce inflation by limiting the amount of active money circulating in the economy. It also aims to quell unsustainable speculation and capital investment that previous expansionary policies may have triggered. To back this up, CNBC posted, Goldman predicts the Fed will hike rates more than four times this year, more than expected. So what's this mean to us? It means we'll begin seeing gradually higher interest rates on things like auto loans, credit cards, mortgages, to name just a few. Now, I know higher mortgage interest rates might sound like a bad thing, but here's the reality. As mortgage rates increase, it could help stabilize the rapid acceleration of home prices we've seen in recent years. In turn, this will decrease the average cost of things we buy every day as the inflation rate drops. Suppose mortgage rates get high enough with today's home prices. In that case, it could begin to not only decelerate home prices, but start exerting downward pressure on home prices towards the end of the year. More on this is coming up in the home price forecast in just a bit. So based on this information is why it seems likely mortgage interest rates might climb to 3.75% to 4.25% by the end of the year. If the rates do go up, it's essential to remember that mortgage rates are still low looking back over the past four years. This chart by Fred Economic Data shows that the average rate for a 30 year fixed rate mortgage was 4.94% in November, 2018. It's worth noting, I've been talking about the mortgage rates for primary home loans, not for second homes and investment properties. The rates and costs for second homes and investment properties will increase. Expect to hear more about that around April 1st when the new rates and costs are announced. Now let's talk about prediction number two, housing affordability concerns. Throughout 2021, Every week we saw posts like this one from CNBC as home prices hit ever escalating record highs. To back it up, Redfin housing data shows the average price of homes increased 15.2% year over year nationwide by December 2021 with a median sales price of $382,890 as of the recording of this video. So what does this mean to you? Based upon your monthly income and debts, you know what is financially comfortable to you or not. So here's what I'm asking you to do. First, always stay true to yourself. Second, think things through to make well-informed decisions that are right for you, for the reasons important to you, financially or otherwise. Okay, let me back up why home affordability is more of an issue than it may seem and how it's likely to affect you and the real estate market at large. So when you're looking at housing affordability in its purest form, there are three main data points we need to gather. First, we need to know the current median income per household. Second, we need to know the current median sales price for homes. And third, we need to know the current trending mortgage interest rate. So let's pack it up and hit the internet trail together to find the facts. In 2021, according to a website with oodles of data curiously named, don't quit your day job. They found the median household income in the United States was approximately $67,463. 
Redfin's housing market overview shows the average median sales price of a home around $382,890. This chart by Fred Economic Data shows the current fixed rate mortgage is averaging around 3.56% as of the recording of this video. All right, that was a fun trip together, gathering the data points we needed, and it also gave us some pretty cool B-roll for this video too. But what good is data unless we can make it fun and show you how to use it in your everyday life? So let's bring it all together now using a couple of sites. I link the sites in the description below for your convenience. We'll first stop by our friends at NerdWallet to use their home affordability calculator. Now let's use the data we collected to see how much home is truly affordable to the average American household. For fun, let's give that average American household members names. We'll call them James and Mary. Of course, you can customize the details with your information to gain clarity on your situation. But for now, we'll focus on James and Mary's scenario starting at the top. We'll enter the location Let's say James and Mary live, work, and play in Las Vegas like me. From there, look to the right and go down to income and debts. For household income, we'll use the $67,463 we found earlier. Next is the total minimum monthly recurring debts for things like credit cards, student loans, car notes, etc. Let's say James and Mary have $400 monthly recurring debts which seems relatively normal for a lot of people I've helped. Of course, individual debt obligations will vary. We're just keeping it simple for this example. Okay, so let's assume James and Mary have average credit. So let's edit the rate to 3.56%, which is the current average fixed rate mortgage we learned from Fred Economic Data earlier in this video. Now let's go to loan details. Let's assume James and Mary have worked hard and saved up $20,000 for their down payment. Now, look to the left and see how much home loan is affordable in this scenario. In this case, it looks like James and Mary can comfortably afford a home up to around $248,922. Well, according to Redfin's housing data, that's quite a bit lower than the median sales price of a home of $382,890. Now, there's one thing I didn't tell you about James and Mary. Mary is pregnant with baby number one. Their 900 square foot, two bedroom, one bathroom apartment with the cardboard no longer fits their lifestyle and life goals. So what options do James and Mary have? Well, depending on the loan type, they might have the ability to increase their total debt to income ratios you see on the affordability slider. For example, if they stretch themselves, they might get approved for $302,754. Yet, NerdWallet suggests an ideal number from the current prices of homes in Las Vegas is around $357,448. I wonder, what kind of compromises James and Mary will have to make to buy a home of their own? What would you be willing to do in their situation? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you. Okay, back to James and Mary. This is where James and Mary need to consider their financial comfort zone carefully. So should you. If they slide into the aggressive range, they could potentially max out around $360,830. But it comes with a trade-off. Their total monthly mortgage, an estimated $2,406 a month, plus their minimum monthly debts will consume 50% of their total monthly gross income, AKA pre-tax income. James and Mary's situation is not unlike many Americans, average or otherwise. When facing a significant financial decision like buying a home, clarifying what's important to you is imperative. So here are four questions to think through. Number one, what does home mean to you? Number two, how long do you plan on living in the home you buy? Number three, what compromises are you willing to make to achieve your home buying goals? And number four, is now the right time in your life to buy a home? Only you truly know the answers to these questions. One thing to keep in mind is mortgage rates are going up. As the rates climb, it will diminish your purchasing power. Gaining clarity on your reasons why you're buying a home of your own now will help you succeed when the time is right for you to buy a home for the reasons important to you. Be true to yourself, always. To further illustrate how monthly mortgage payments change as mortgage rates climb, let's check out this slider courtesy of Redfin. 
let's use Fred Economic Data's current fixed rate mortgage of 3.56%. This time, we'll use the $500,000 home price as an example. Let's find 3.56% on the line. It looks like we're hovering around $2,535 in a monthly mortgage at a 3.56% rate. Of course, that's assuming the criteria Redfin shows us here is being met. So if mortgage rates are going up, how much will that change your monthly mortgage payment? Let's find out. At 3.75%, the rate adds around $50 to the monthly mortgage. At 4%, the rate change would add about $105 to the monthly mortgage. And at 4.25%, the monthly mortgage goes up to around $2,695. That's a difference of an added $160 per month for the same home price, adjusting for the interest rates. That $160 equals an extra $1,920 in increased annual expenses. That begs the question, how much money does a household need to stay under the stretch mark to buy a house at today's prices? Let's see. Let's assume James and Mary got promoted and their new household income is $100,000 per year. Keeping all the rest of the criteria we use the same, they can now afford a house up to $396,479 without stretching their budget. That made me wonder, and maybe you too, just how many households actually earn $100,000 or more a year? Our friends that don't quit your day job have the answer. Approximately 33.5% of US households earned $100,000 or more in 2021. To put it another way, that's roughly 43,588,408 households in the United States earning $100,000 or more annually. I wonder how many of those households already own a home. I suspect most of them already own a home and won't be selling this year unless it's for an excellent reason. Perhaps a job relocation or another major life event not related to trading up homes. That brings up prediction number three, housing supply. We all know the primary elements of supply and demand. In short, prices go up when demand is high and supply is low. Conversely, when supply is high and demand is low, prices go down until the supply and demand balance. Then the cycles repeat itself again like a never-ending YouTube video, perhaps like this one. But I assure you, your patience and attention will be rewarded. So to help out, stretch out your finger and tap the like button, then subscribe. Thank you. Currently, the United States faces an unprecedented supply shortage of homes to meet home buyer demand. CNBC reports America is short more than 5 million homes and builders can't make up the difference. To back up the article, the active listing count in the United States is hovering around 483,266 homes for sale nationwide, according to Fred Economic Data as of the recording of this video. Like adding salt to a wound, Large investment firms are buying what is considered affordable homes throughout the United States. I guess these uber wealthy corporations prefer us to be a renter nation instead of living our best life pursuing our own American dream. It's almost like these firms are running some kind of America for rent scheme. And we're the ones that are left out in the cold without a coat. That's just not cool. And they're doing it all for money. So how many homes might sell in 2022? Zillow projects 6.57 million total homes will sell this year. This is up from the estimated 6.1 million total homes sold in 2021. Even though we can all agree, there is no shortage of home buying demand, there is an abyss of affordable homes, especially for first time home buyers. So what's this mean to you? With home prices already at all time highs and mortgage rates going up, it's very likely this is the catalyst that will cause an uptick in housing inventory as the year progresses. Why? The reality is that many would-be home buyers are fatigued by the overheated real estate market. Frankly, being priced out of the market just like James and Mary from Prediction 2, it really sucks. Especially when they have worked so hard to save up for a down payment and buyer closing costs to get a house. So let me know in the comments if you can relate to this post by USA Today. It's just draining. Home buyers frustrated by a cutthroat housing market putting their searches on hold. 
Some say buyers on the fence will hit the panic buying button as mortgage rates increase. So my question to you is, will it be you hitting the panic buying button? If so, curious minds would love to know. So drop your comments below. Another thing to remember is what happens if the bidding wars are anything like they were in 2021? In 2021, the bidding wars were ferocious. Most home buyers in the hottest metros like Las Vegas bid over list price by seven or more percent of the price in the face of the fierce competition. They did this to beat out the large inflow of people flush with cash coming from other states. Here's where the reality gut check comes into play. If the price of homes exceed what a buyer can pay, what happens to the home prices? At a minimum, the price growth, AKA appreciation, must slow down. So mark my words, you'll hear more news and see more posts about the housing market cooling as the year progresses. Buyer demand is high, but the number of home buyers who can buy is lower than meets the eye. As the year progresses, you'll hear many experts using $3 words to describe the housing market this year. These $3 words will be tossed around like chips at a Las Vegas poker table. The $3 words sound like normalize, decelerate, moderate, taper, calm, cooling, stabilize, settling, balancing, and recalibrating to name just a few. Of course, this also means the fear-mongering clickbait about a looming housing crash will likely come around with renewed vigor. So please, someone pour me a triple to help me make it through that fear-mongering clickbait again. Seriously, please don't buy into the nasty fear-mongering clickbait. You'll only get hurt. Besides, you'll always get the truth from me whether it's what you want to hear or not. Please remember the best time to buy a home or sell a house is when the time is right for you in your life for the reasons important to you. Real estate markets will always go up, down, and all around. Don't try to chase the market or the market will chase you right out of it. Be true to yourself. When the time is right for you to buy a home of your own, you'll know in your mind, heart, and soul. Of course, you'll also want to have a top-notch realtor on your side. So save this link whenever the time comes for you to buy a house and let my friends at Home and Money give you concierge service to help you find the best realtor to help you achieve your goals. The link is in the description below. Okay, the first three predictions set up prediction four, the home price forecast for this year. Earlier in this video, we touched on many sources that believe the average price of homes will go higher this year. Look, to be honest, I'm just not bullish about home prices this year, nor am I some bear hibernating in the forest somewhere. However, I am pragmatic about the facts we've covered together to this point. Unlike Goldman Sachs 16% price increase projection or Zillow's 11% home price forecast, which I think is crazy. So what I believe will happen is the overall housing market will surely decelerate and possibly go negative this year for the reasons already mentioned and those coming up. Of course, I'm also leaning on my experience as a full-time practicing realtor in Las Vegas who works with people every day to buy their home and sell their house. So I hear you and I'm here for you. So will the real estate market go up or will it go down? It looks pretty likely that the housing market could have a shot to appreciate by 3% only because of the lack of current housing inventory in the face of high buyer demand. Even Redfin has a similar opinion projecting a more balanced housing market in 2022, and by winter, higher mortgage rates along with already high home prices will likely slow annual price growth down to around 3%. At the same time, the housing market could trend down, shaving up to 3% or slightly more off today's home prices. This could happen because of the higher mortgage interest rates and the already unaffordable homes for millions of would-be home buyers getting priced out of the real estate market. The amount of priced out home buyers is only growing every day. Consider for a moment this article by Fortune. Rising mortgage rates would kick some home buyers out of the market and could put downward pressure on home price growth. Or this Kiplinger letter that reports housing price growth is slowing down and will cool over the next few months. So that brings up a fundamental question about the honest truth of the housing market. It goes back to affordability. If the average home buyer cannot afford the average price of a home, what happens to the price? Will it go up or will it go down? 
We all know the laws of supply and demand state that a price must come down to balance with the price a buyer can afford. Now, think about what we've seen over the past few years. How often have you heard about the historically low mortgage interest rates and unchecked home price appreciation? The way I see it, it's like stretching a rubber band on your wrist to the breaking point. If the tension isn't released, then the rubber band will stretch and stretch until it reaches its breaking point. And like my friend Eminem likes to say, snap, back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. Okay, so full disclaimer here. Eminem doesn't know who I am, though I like to think we're friends. Many of his lyrics resonate with me and I truly appreciate him and his music. So if you do too, give a shout in the comments below. Thanks. Let's get back to reality. The rubber band in our analogy is the US housing market. The tension is elevated home prices, lack of affordability, housing inventory shortage, high home buyer demand, and increasing mortgage interest rates. So you might be wondering, if that means a housing crash is coming. No, not at all. It does mean that home prices must realign with what the average American like James and Mary from prediction number two can realistically afford. If it doesn't do that this year, the tension in the rubber band will become stronger and the pop will be harder in 2023. And that's a topic for another video and another time. For now, let's talk about what this means to you. If you're buying a home this year, get your financial ducks in a row and gain clarity on what home means to you. What compromises are you willing to make and which ones are non-negotiable? It's also valuable that you have the right agent helping you navigate the fast-moving real estate market. If you want some help finding a top agent near you, contact my friends over at Home & Money and let their care team take care of you. Check them out, it's free, and the link is in the description below. If you're a seller, this could be the top of the roller coaster ride for you. You know that top everyone says they wish they knew about and it comes with the best views? In this case, the view comes into focus with favorable offers, fewer buyer concessions, selling quickly, in most cases, for the most money possible. Either way, the choice is yours. Please make it a well-informed choice that is right for you for the reasons important to you. So if you don't already own a home and you're not planning on buying a home this year, what options do you have? Well, you could move in with mom and dad, family members, or friends if that's a possibility for you. But more than likely, you'll be looking for a rental if you don't already have one, or perhaps if you're being priced out of the one that you do have, you'll need to find a new place to live. This post by Forbes titled, Nowhere to Go, How Record High Rent Hikes Have Cornered Renters, talks about the challenges today's renters face as home prices soar. Housing affordability occurs on multiple fronts, not just new home construction and resale homes, but also monthly rents. This is a massive issue for many millions of people. To be honest, my heart goes out to you. I've been where you are before, and it's like being stuck in between a rock and a hard place. You see, in 2006, I was still serving active duty in the United States Marine Corps when rental prices were climbing ever higher and higher than what I could afford to pay. To make it worse, I was in San Diego at the time of all places to be. So what was affordable for me to rent became increasingly tiny. I ended up in a studio apartment with paper thin walls. It was so miserable living in a pup tent would have been preferable. So I feel your pain and understand the catch 22 the current housing market is causing you. Just know with time, this too shall pass. Unfortunately, I don't have good news for you if you're planning on renting this year, or I might, depending on your point of view. More on that in a moment. Now, if you're a landlord, you're sitting back like a fat cat, happily collecting those increasing monthly rental checks. The National Association of Realtors is forecasting monthly rental prices will increase by 7.1% by the end of the year. Suppose you're planning on making a move and seeking out lower rent. In that case, Zumper makes it pretty easy to track rental data across the United States. So that brings up the question, what is causing the increased demand for rentals? To answer that question, the Harvard Joint Center for Housing Studies explains in their report titled, America's Rental Housing 2022. Let's take a look at page 29 of their study. They say, and I quote, 
A steady wave of young adults forming new households will prop up rental demand while skyrocketing home prices continue to price out potential buyers out of the homeowner market. Realtor Magazine also published a report of how the lack for sale inventory drives rents higher. And even went as far as to share a graphic of how every state has lost low rent since 2011. That map is courtesy of the Harvard Joint Center for Housing Studies. Not to be outdone, Realtor.com says, another reason for the surge in demand for rentals is that many would-be home buyers were thwarted by fast rising home prices and a lack of homes for sale. So what does this mean to you? It really depends on you and your point of view. Here's why. Now, people can easily toss in the towel, throw their hands in the air like they just don't care, giving up on their dreams and themselves in the process, which would be tragic by the way, or they can step back from the chaos to gain clarity into the situation and how to move forward in a way that is best for them. Sometimes, my friend, it's during the hard times we become the most creative and we grow the most. See, we tend to get clever in the hardest of times, and sometimes it takes going through the darkness to see the light so we can put together short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals, road mapping where we want to go in the future, and the steps involved to reach our goals. I share this with you not as some kind of feel-good inspo. No, my friend, I share this with you as someone who has walked that path and crawled along the way at times. To be honest, I still do. But what I learned about becoming better is if you take one step every day towards a worthwhile goal, you will eventually arrive at your desired destination. That journey home goes through your soul. It will challenge you and change you for the better if you learn and grow as you go. To put it another way, my friend Heather Torres at Think Media says it like this, sometimes you have to be under it to get over it. My takeaway from her snappy ditty is that the pressure of being under it forms who we really are inside. So when we're over it, we know who we really are and what we stand for in life. After all, doesn't a lump of coal become a diamond, but only after it has endured enough pressure first? Well, yeah. Look, I've really struggled over the past 18 months with some challenges that caused me to realize the best thing I could do was to take a break from creating content. So I did. To be honest, I almost decided to quit it altogether. But my friend Eddie Pinero from Your World Within reminded me of the fundamental truth in life. Now, I've watched so many of Eddie's videos, I don't recall which one he said this exactly. But what really clicked for me was when he reminded me that the world is what you make it. You will see what you focus on and when the small stuff feels daunting, it's because the deep stuff is out of alignment. That's the time to rebalance and gain clarity to move forward. My takeaway from Eddie's message is this. Sometimes we go to life's university in the face of adversity. That's when we learn the most and often the hard way. But the lessons learned at the School of Hard Knocks will always be remembered and applied as we evolve to reach the next level. So if you've ever felt overwhelmed by life, drop us a line in the comments below with your favorite quote or thoughts that helped you get through the hard times so you could enjoy the beauty of life again. Now, if you're still in the dark times, then just know to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. There's always a reason to get up and strive to live your best life. You'll make it through the hard times, my friend. Just keep moving forward. When you don't feel like it, move forward. When life isn't going your way, move forward. And when it isn't going your way, move forward. At all times, get up and keep moving forward. With that in mind, let's move forward. Now, some people have the elasticity to think outside of the box with the visibility beyond traditional housing. Consider for a moment, this USA Today post about manufactured houses delivering the American dream amid tough housing market. When people catch the herd mentality virus, they tend to move forward with the blinders on. They don't see the opportunities popping out along the way. Now look, maybe manufactured homes might be an opportunity for you, or maybe it's not. Only you will know what's best for you. But how will you know about the possibilities if you close your eyes to the opportunities? So let's look at another exciting solution. Perhaps something like the village farm community of tiny homes in Austin, Texas will scratch the right itch that makes you tick. Consider this for a moment. According to CNBC, the national average for a tiny house is 87% cheaper than the average price of the typical home coming in around 
$1,000. Now, Zillow suggests another creative approach to solve the housing shortage Rubik's Cube. Like maybe more Gen Zers and Millennials will buy a second home before a primary residence, either as an investment or to live in a few months of the year. Now, if you're curious about how this works and the pitfalls to avoid, drop me a line in the comments and I'll make a video about the pros and cons of buying a second home before your first home. Turns out it could have devastating consequences if it's not done right. And we'll save that one for another time. Let's get back to the current time. If more people take a moment to gain increased clarity into how long they plan to live in their new home, they may find it helps put their home search in perspective. How so? Consider this. Have you asked yourself if a condo or a townhouse will satisfy your near-term needs and lifestyle? Redfin reports the closing gap between high rental prices and monthly mortgage payments is narrowing. They also believe condo demand will take off this year. So back to you. If you're trying to figure out how to keep a roof over your head this year, whether you break down and buy it, or whether you rent one. Let us know what you're planning to do in the comments below. Thank you. One thing is for sure, when a lack of affordable housing meets a lack of affordable rent, it causes many to move to less expensive areas. So it's like some kind of great migration is happening due to housing affordability issues. We'll touch on migration patterns in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the real estate market conditions for this year. Redfin highlights the fact home buyers face a record supply shortage heading into 2022. So while the year may be starting out like 2021, will it continue the same path? We know the Fed is gearing up to do rate hikes. It's already happening. Reuters reports that you'll hear more about the coming rate hikes starting this March. So what happens when high mortgage rates collide with high home prices? For the reasons we covered to this point, 2022 will break loose from the 2021 path as the year goes on. So what does this mean to you depends on whether you're a home buyer or a home seller. If you're buying a home, then be prepared to face bidding wars in the first and second quarters of the year. As the Fed gradually hikes the rates, it will offset inflation and chill demand as the year goes on. As a result, we'll see the housing market leveling off around the third and fourth quarters as more buyers refuse to pay to play the insane game of overpaying for a house. If you know you're going to buy a home this year, then the question for you is really one of timing. Early on, you'll see low inventory and very high odds of bidding wars with relatively low interest rates. Then later in the year, you might see more home options with fewer bidding wars, yet contend with higher interest rates. Therein lies the catch 22 uncovered in prediction number two with James and Mary. For home buying ambition, the price of admission is high this year. So if you're buying a home this year, what will you do? Will you aim for the lower interest rates or will you wait for home, more homes to be on the market and take a chance on the higher interest rates? Drop us a line below with your game plan. Thank you. If you're selling a house, now is the time to sell. To say it another way, get while the getting's good. As country music artist Bill Anderson sang his way to number five on the Billboard charts in 1967. Thank God it wasn't me singing because I hope I didn't hurt your ears <laughs> even attempting that. Have some fun with that, right? So, okay. So after you do all that getting, where do you get to next? That's a question to think through before taking action to sell your house. For these reasons and for those we've already covered is why I believe the 2022 housing market will remain a seller's market while progressively cooling off from its overheated trot in 2021 as 2022 plays out, resulting in a turning point going into 2023, perhaps trending to a more balanced market. That raises the question worth asking yourself. Is now the right time for you to buy a home or sell a house? Only you know the answer to that question. Now, if you want to hear it from another point of view, check out this video by Matt Layton about why he's not buying a house this year. Then to intensify the intrigue, consider the fact that Matt is a top performing full-time realtor in Arlington, Virginia. Now, Matt is a friend of mine, a fellow YouTuber, and just a wonderful guy all around. You're almost done watching this video, so check his video out afterward. You'll be glad you did. The link to Matt's video is in the description. So we've reached the end of our prediction list with number seven, migration patterns. We'll keep this one short and sweet. 
If you're still with me at this point, thank you for being here. And if you'd be so kind, please drop me a line below to let me know. Thank you. In 2022, more people are likely to pack it up and hit the road in search of more affordable housing in what could be called the Great Migration. Redfin reports the share of home buyers looking to relocate is near pandemic peaks. All right, a change of scenery can rejuvenate the soul. That's cool, but where is everyone going? According to the same Redfin report, many buyers fled expensive states like California, Illinois, and New York. Instead, they found refuge in places like Miami, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Tampa, Dallas, San Antonio, and Atlanta, to name a few. But what's causing this migration shift? In part, Zillow reports the rise of flexible work options, including hybrid and fully remote work options, will continue to reshape which areas are most in demand. According to Realtor.com, some of the most affordable cities to buy a home this year include Magna, Utah, Chalco, Nebraska, Malden, South Carolina, Beach Grove, Indiana, and Portsmouth, Virginia. If you want me to make a video about the most affordable places to move this year, let me know in the comments. Thank you. And of course, if you haven't already done so, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I really appreciate you hanging in there with me to the end of this video. You're truly incredible. I'm sending you positive vibes that everything goes your way. For now, if you're ready to learn how not to get screwed buying a house, click here or click here to learn more about the home buying process. Either way, Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.